In the history of mankind, there once was a very interesting event after which the planet would never be the same, and we would live in the world of fallout, paying for food with bottle caps. On October 1962, a skirmish occurred between the two greatest world powers, which almost became the last one in history. Well, maybe not the last one, since humans will always fight, and that's a fact. However, as Albert Einstein said, I know not with what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. The cause of the affair was the secret stationing of Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba. Thus, the world was placed on the brink of a new world war, but thankfully, Kennedy and Khrushchev got their shit together, and everything turned out alright. On October 14th, 1962, a US spy plane captured an image of a nuclear missile launcher on Cuba. Analysts from the CIA and the Pentagon determined them as Soviet medium-range ballistic missiles that are capable of carrying a nuclear load. In two days, the images were shown to the US President, John F. Kennedy. He, in turn, immediately called up his homies from national security to discuss this unpleasant situation. Situation. Thus, began the Cuban Missile Crisis. At that time, during the Cold War, the US and the Soviet Union were in the midst of an arms race. That's why, without thinking twice, in 1961, which is a year earlier, Washington deployed its own medium-range ballistic missiles into Italy and Turkey, the radius of which completely covered the European part of the Union, including Moscow. Then the leader of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, decided to add his own fuel to the fire and place Soviet missiles near the US. Where? Correct. Cuba. Under the pretext of helping the Cuban people, the Soviet Union in the summer of 1962 secretly transferred military equipment and 40,000 military personnel to the island. During the first 13 days of the Cuban crisis, the US seriously considered the possibility of a missile strike and the invasion of Cuba, but thankfully both sides made concessions and the war was prevented. On October 26th of the same year, in a restaurant two blocks away from the White House, a political correspondent, John Scali, met with the employee of the General Consulate of the USSR. Alexander Fomin. Scali knew that Fomin was a member of the KGB. Fomin, in turn, was aware that Scali had connections with the presidential administration and personally knew Kennedy. Obviously, they met to discuss the Cuban Missile Crisis. Scali claimed that the US could end Fidel Castro's regime in 48 hours, and therefore the USSR should immediately remove its missiles from Cuba. Fomin, in turn, said that if America invaded Cuba, the Soviets would strike back, quote, at a very sensitive point. Scali assumed he was talking about West Berlin, and Fomin didn't deny it. Basically, two fully grown men representing the interests of their nations for several hours were arguing about what country had the bigger di missiles. Nothing unusual, but apparently this was not enough, so three hours later, they met once again. Scali stated that on behalf of the US government, he's delivering new proposed solutions to the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Soviets dismantle and remove rocket launchers from Cuba, while the US lifts the blockade of the island and publicly denounces the invasion. All of this information Fulman cabled to Moscow through the KGB, but it turned out Fulman didn't have the authority to negotiate about Cuba, and thus in the future for his actions, he was screamed at? Interesting. In the morning of October 27th over Cuba, an American spy plane was shut down. The pilot died. The military advisors urged Kennedy to declare war on Cuba before it was too late, but the head of the Pentagon suggested to wait, since for Khrushchev this was just as much of a surprise because the plane was shut down without a command from the USSR. No one knew who gave the command, but it was obvious that the Cuban government had something to do with this. The fact is, throughout the entirety of the Cuban Missile Crisis, Fidel Castro, the leader of Cuba, repeatedly asked Khrushchev to perform a nuclear strike on the United States in order to avoid an invasion lol, a true genius. Thus, after the incident with the plane, Cuban anti-air gunners fired at two more spy planes, but thankfully both remained intact. On that same day, on October 27th off the coast of Cuba, the US Navy fired at the Soviet submarine B-59 using signal depth charges, making a rise to the surface. But the Americans didn't even know that the submarine had a torpedo with a nuclear warhead. And here comes the fun part. The submarine commander believed that a war broke out and was preparing to launch the torpedoes. Another senior officer convinced him not to. As a result, the submarine sent out a signal to stop provoking. The Americans backed off and the situation cooled off. The problem was that the only information that the Soviet sailors could get about the outside world was whatever they could observe themselves. But all they could see was the fact that they were surrounded by the US fleet, they were getting fired at from all directions, and were being stuffed with explosives every second. As the last case resort, each submarine could activate their nuclear weapons without a confirmation from the command center. 
but this required an agreement of three individuals. On the submarine B-59, these people were the commander of the submarine, Valentin Savitsky, political officer, Ivan Maslenikov, and the commander of the deployed submarine detachment, Vasily Arhipov. For two weeks, Moscow didn't come in contact with the submarine to enlighten them about the situation, so they obviously didn't know what was happening. Valentin Savitsky, after he heard what he believed were bombs exploding all over the perimeter of the submarine, thought that the war already started, and made the decision to launch the nuclear torpedoes, knowing well it would mean death for him and his whole team. However, Vasily Arhipov, as the commander of the submarine, showed unbelievable strength and reasoning and didn't let that happen. The truth is, this guy in that horrifying day saved the whole world, else you wouldn't be watching this video at all. As a result, Kennedy and Khrushchev agreed that the Soviets remove their missiles from Cuba, while the US publicly denounces the invasion of the island. In a matter of three weeks, the Soviet launchers were dismantled, loaded, and shipped away from Cuba. After making sure the missiles were gone, Kennedy on November 20th gave the command to end the blockade of the island that was implemented earlier. However, Kennedy did one more undisclosed thing, promised to remove American missiles from Turkey and Italy. He couldn't say that publicly in order to not look bad in front of his NATO partners, yet he kept his promise. And in the year 1963, these missiles were deemed outdated and were dismantled. At the same time, very few knew about this. That's why it was believed that Kennedy came out victorious from the Cuban Missile Crisis. Fidel Castro called this compromise a betrayal. The party leaders of the USSR reminded Khrushchev of this two years later by removing him from power. But I mean, what else did you expect? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please watch our other videos about Pearl Harbor or the Vietnam War. And don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps us out. But for now, goodbye.